Hey there, folks. The cast are coming at you one more time. Last episode, we said goodbye to Supersonic Blur. Just wasn't quick enough to keep up with the competition. As we head into the second half of our show, we're going to take a look at one of the very real challenges the industry faces every day, varied audiences. Sometimes you're talking to players that know the game in and out, and other times it's the people that have never seen the game before. And that's the challenge we're going to put our casters to this week. You've got to keep everybody on the same page despite varied levels of knowledge. Let's take a look at who handles it and who does it by the book here on The Caster. Hey, what's up? Welcome back, folks, here at The Caster. We're going to get into some commentary today, but a little bit different. The world of esports is very new, and while you do have your established veterans, you're also going to have an audience filled with people that have never looked at what you're casting before. Casting to those people is a very different experience, and so to cover some of that, we've got Ryan Agro Bailey. Yeah, so today's challenge is all about casting to that new audience, and so if I was one of these contestants, I would probably be looking to break down the game at a very base level, you know, explain the win conditions, how, what is actually happening in the game, what the characters do, how you get items, just making sure that your viewer can actually understand what they're looking at. Ball goes in the hoop. Can they break it down like that? We'll see. I am so tired. I have been just staying up, as not as late as possible, but I've been staying up till one or two, studying Smite, trying to just watch VOD, and we have to get up, I'm getting up at seven, it's like, I'm just, I'm shot. I've been not doing this so long now, I'm shot. I have the worst sore throat in the world, in the world's history. If I'm not as awake, I think I default a bit more to that presentational style, and I think that's where I'm getting most criticized. You know, I'm getting tired now, hopefully it doesn't look too bad in my eyes, but, you know, uh, we just kinda gotta push through and make it to the end here. Welcome everybody, we are hopping into a game of Smite in which five players will face off against another five players attempting to destroy their base. Latigris here, how you doing today? I'm doing well, I'm really excited to see exactly how this one's gonna shake out. Talk to me about these team compositions. When you look at Soar, what exactly are they trying to do here? Well, when you look at Soar, you know that they have a support whose name is Jigs, and he loves that Amaterasu. And you know that Fine OK, being new to the team, and he's completely fine with playing anything, I'm not exactly certain that Jigs wants to start with a Kabrakan, especially with a Medusa. I casted as well as I could to someone who has never seen the game, especially working on item names and rotations and just kind of definitions of terms and the, the, the like. Um, Agro here, just based on this, on these two picks of bands that we're seeing so far, I mean, what are you expecting here from Soar and Dignitas? Well, from Soar, I'm looking specifically at that Scylla in the mid lane for Anadster. Soar has drafted a ton of setup for their carry player in mid, so look for that Scylla to start to make game-changing plays in the mid to late game. It's just a question of how much can Soar handle the pressure of Dignitas's roster early on. That's right, and we are going to get this game underway just 20 seconds in, both people, both sides just roaming around, try to find maybe an early pick. You can see the congregation of Team Dignitas here in the middle lane. Maybe they're looking to snowball, and you know how it works. Middle lane is the pressure lane. You got you to gotta snowball that lane. I, I chose Chair 1 because Chair 1 can do more of the play-by-play -play and lead commentary versus the uh, analytical work of Chair 2, which I would have done even worse at. So what does pressure give to a team? Pressure gives the ability to spill all over the map. When you have the mid pressure especially, you want to put that Kabrakan with Scylla because Scylla, her early game is not perfect, but Kabrakan's level 1 is very, very strong. Yeah, Scylla doesn't look so scary in the beginning, kind of adorable and tiny, but once she gets pretty buff there, it can be quite intimidating. I just tried to relax and have fun, and I don't know how that's going to work out for me. In this game of Smite, what you want to do is push down those towers. You push pressure in each lane to cause rotations. Once you cause those rotations, you can then go try to get, 
kills and ganks. As we see a little bit of damage, Bramble Blast coming out from the Cernunos. Will Akil be able, sorry, Arkyle be able to take a kill? No, it'll be a quick disengage. Take a look here at our mini map. You've got the Gold Fury here. That's going to be that first big objective that they're looking at. So let's say you complete that first step. You do establish lane control. Once you start building up that lead, then you're looking for that Gold Fury, get more of a lead. Now we can start looking towards breaking down those barriers to get into that big dude we talked about before. So if Athena doesn't have a whole lot of early game in that solo lane, what does she bring to a team? She brings a very, very strong level 5 and a late game just CC consistent. She's very good at both burning actives, and whenever you recognize that their actives are done, especially their purification beads, you know that you can get a free kill, especially in a, in a pick on the jungle when you catch someone completely out of position. The analysis part of the game, I'm extremely comfortable. I could talk about it forever. If we were on an analysis desk, I would have to be dragged off. And speaking of vision, some vision over for Sora as they took those Oracle Harpies over there by the Gold Fury. But some action going down here as a lot of damage is taken on to Terra. Is she going to go down? She is Kabrakin with the First Blood. And First Blood's so important right now because as you mentioned, this early game, getting that extra gold from the First Blood, getting that experience as well. This is Sora getting a little bit ahead on the left side. Dignitas has that pressure on the right, but this allows Sora to get a little bit closer to those ever important items on the left. Yeah, absolutely. And the reason why that fight goes so handily in favor there of Sora is it's just pure numbers. Um, when when they make that rotation over from Kambrak and again being piloted by Homie Faye, it's just 3v2. The other jungler was elsewhere, and that's why that fight went so handily for him. So that's another thing you want to keep track of here. Just take a look at just how many people are here. That's going to be another big way, another big reason for it. It's the jungler's job to try and keep track of where his opponent is so that you don't have that disadvantage for it, and there really just wasn't much Trick Tank could do. Absolutely. And uh, Soul sitting in the middle lane here for Team Dignitas. He's been farming, and actually, we're going to see the first roam out of the middle lane, exposing his tower. It will be a congregation on the right side for Team Dignitas. And speaking of, you're saying how Soul has a bit of an easier time clearing with that damage, and we saw a lot of members of Soar kind of piling into that mid lane, so saying, hey, I know you're bringing the party to me, but I can hold my own. Let me show you what I can do. So very smart of them to try and balance that out there. All done. Nice job. That was a lot of fun. Casting with an actual high-res smite caster was a blast. And Agro and I, I think we, we killed it. Uh, I, I don't feel good about that mini challenge. I, yeah, I just don't feel good about it. Smite is not my game. Either they thought that I did make improvement and tried to seem more genuine and they pushed me through, or they didn't see that and other people performed better and they sent me home. So I think this is a big day for all of us, but personally, something that I've been struggling with for years to try to fix, to be less of a mechanical type caster and speaker and more naturalized, all coming down to this moment. So we'll have to see what happens. Rabies, John, Gabriella, other John, you guys just finished your mini challenge. How y'all feeling? Good, good. Yeah. Good. All right, little, little range of emotions, but we do have Mr. Agro here to go ahead and break it down. So without further ado, how you thought? All right, we'll start with uh, with Ravy, since you went first, my man. Um, I know you're worried about your game knowledge, but this was a challenge for you to excel at because game knowledge wasn't really necessary here. You are a new player, and so this was a perfect opportunity for you to experience that, and I just don't think you did a, a very good job of that. Um, it took you too long to get to the win condition, how you actually win the game. You didn't have to show that you knew the game. This was an opportunity for you to let me, as your two chair, explain the game to a new audience, and I think that you just got too caught up in trying to show that you knew the game. Understood. Ron, you were, you were halfway there. I could feel that you wanted to explain the game to a new audience, but your want to also analyze the game at a deep level got in your way. Um, from the very beginning, you started talking about player tendencies when we haven't even discussed what the characters do yet, let alone the players playing them. Um, that being said, your analysis was good, and whenever I spoon-fed you some tell me what a new player needs to know, you did a good job with those. But just keep in mind what the overall goal for that challenge was. All right, Gabriella, you, you went too far right off the bat. Uh, if someone has found us on the internet, I think that they, they have some understanding of video games, and saying 5v5 kill the base is probably a little bit of overkill in that sense. That being said, I think that you identified what the objective was and made sure you hit your bullet points, but don't be afraid to 
be a little bit more genuine. I, I, you, you use these, you have a lot of personality and it, it comes out at times, but even at those times, I don't know how genuine that feels to me if I were to sit there and listen. Um, you don't have to be this perfect caster all the time. We make, we make mistakes. It's okay to be yourself and be flawed in that sort of, in that sort of sense. And John, finally, uh, frankly, I thought you absolutely killed it. You did a great job. You were by far the best at fe sounding natural and explaining the game to a new level. And most importantly, you let me do my job, which was you set me up in order to answer the questions that needed, an that needed answering. You did a good job of saying, this is the win condition, but how do you get there? And then allowing me to really expand upon that. I thought you absolutely killed it, man. Great job. Well, I think it's kind of clear which way you're leaning, Ryan, but aggro, break it down. Who is the victor for the mini challenge? It's got to be John Finch. I mean, he, he really impressed me with the way he did, performed, and uh, he was a clear winner. Congratulations, John Finch. You go ahead and you win the mini challenge, of course. You got to get something for it. Yes, now, remember please. earlier when we made you watch a game that wasn't the game you did the mini challenge for? Y'all took notes. You three get to leave your notes at home, but John will actually be able to keep his note card <laughs> for the main challenge. We're gonna see how they do when we get to it in just a minute. With the mini challenge over, it's time to get into the meat and potatoes. Now we're gonna have all of our contestants share a desk with Golden Boy. They're gonna have to break down some of the gameplay that they see, so GB, what are you thinking here and how are you thinking about flying? Well, you know, it, I, I'm excited because I get to work with them, which I really do want to see like how they handle it. And I hope that I, I bring a little comfort for them as well, where it's like, you know, hey, like I, I know what you're going through, like let's make this work. So I don't know, I'm excited. Personally, I'm, I'm pumped for this. I, I'm all a flutter. Dude, the, the final four are so different in their casting styles. I'm excited to see how they're going to differ in their analysis. Yeah, for me, even though they're going to have the advantage of having Golden Boy here, they're going to have to deal with Golden Boy's dad jokes. Ooh. And I think that could actually throw one or two of these for a bit of a loop and they might not be able to deal with that. Same time though, obviously it is based on smite here, so the analytical side, there is going to be ones with strengths and weaknesses to this. I'm going to actually judge them equally, for myself at least, based off like where their strengths are. We're definitely going to get four different analysis desks, but at the end of the day, there's a goal. And whatever your flavor is, you can definitely make it right or wrong. So we're going to take a look at that main challenge, just a minute. Game time. Our contestants will finally be on the analyst desk. They'll be asked to work with global icon Golden Boy and develop rapport on the fly. In addition, well, we're gonna be fluently analyzing an entire game that everybody's watched earlier on. Side note, John Finch, the only one allowed to keep his notes from before. Now an analyst desk can get a little dry, so it's important to keep things flowing with humor, references, and just have fun with it. And of course, don't forget to balance your talking points and your presence on the desk. I don't have the smite knowledge. These other guys have the smite knowledge. Like uh, Ron Jobbers, he is a smite analyst. He's a smite analyst. And in this game, he's analyzing smite. Like he's gonna destroy this challenge, you know? And same thing with John. John's gonna destroy this challenge. These guys are smite. In fact, I'm probably the weakest two people in this challenge are me and Gabriella. Thank you so much, Husey and Hindu Man. What a game we just saw there between Obey and Rival. Golden Boy here back at the desk with the one and only Rabies. What a game, man. That game was insane. It was, there was so much agility, so many things happening. It started out one way and it ended a totally different. Joining me on the desk now, Mr. John Finch, the legendary young Link. How you feeling, my man? I feel happy to be here and excited to see such an awesome game four just now there between Obey and Rival. Joining me on the desk is La Tigres. How What's up, doing? everybody? Did I, I, I get it right? Did I get it right? Yeah. Le Tigres? Yeah. I like that. Sounds perfect. Sounds good. Personally, there's a lot riding on this one because they really want me to loosen up and be more genuine. And in my prep for this, I actually kind of sacrificed time prepping for the knowledge aspect in favor of getting myself in the zone to be myself. Alongside Ron Jobbert. Ron, how you feeling, man? I feel very good. I feel probably a lot better than Rival does uh, because I did not just surrender a uh, losing game. No, they <laughs> shots fired immediately. What? Okay, well, let's know. Seriously, though, let's talk about this because Rival, they were off to a great start in that game. Huge what, start. What happened? The issue was that their snowball did not spill over to any of the other lanes. Yeah. Nemesis starting 5 0 at 10 minutes. If you look at that, you should see a death wish. 
but she stayed in solo way too long. Sobek got tanky regardless how, of how long she was there, and she was not able to put any pressure onto mid or duo. And I think if you remember, um, Rival had a very controlling composition. I think that they expected to start off early. Kabrakin was able to get a lot of crowd control, Nemesis' ultimate. So Ice Ice Baby, I think eventually was 5-0 and at that at that point. Yeah. Um, you know, it, it was really that Nemesis and then the control coming from some of the rest of the team comp that made it happen. We thought this game was over in the early minutes, or at least in favor, despite being what I would call a bad pick and ban phase. Team Rival was starting out strong. Now let's stop, mm -hmm. collaborate, and listen. Right. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Do you got anything more? Do you got anything more? Do you remember it? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, look, I know, I know that it seems silly, but Team Rival, they were very stagnant besides the three kills on Nemesis. And I know in uh, it, it's very... Uh, I'm not pushing past that moment in the game, but that really was such a big part of the opening game. Golden Boy is the dopest guy on the planet. He, me and him have been competing against each other. We both lived on the East Coast. We've been competing e against each other since we were 15 years old in the Gears of War community. And, uh, you know, seeing him progress in this industry over the last couple of years, it was such a dream come true to work with you, Golden Boy. Uh, so let's, let's stop, collaborate, and listen. Okay, because... What's your new invention? Oh, oh, my goodness gracious, I hate you. I'm 22 years old. <laughs> so, let's uh, you know what, and that makes a lot of sense. Let's stop, collaborate, and listen. <laughs> okay, because, you know, Vanilla Ice is in the building. I don't know, I just had to make the joke. Right. I just had to make the joke. No, I don't, I don't believe you at all for it. I don't okay, believe you listen all. here, man. There's one thing I know how to do. It's dad jokes. Moving forward, though, <laughs> let's talk about this, though, because mm -hmm. uh, there was also a crazy moment there in the game, Ataraxia. Mm -hmm. I mean, let, let's talk about that for a moment, because I feel like that it, the play that happened there, the way he was able to survive, was just super impressive. Yeah, it was. It was a big. It was a big part of Ataraxia playing really well. It was also a lot of abilities coming in on him at the same time. It was a three-man gank on dual lane, if I remember correctly. Ataraxia is able to get off a big Aegis there, and that's able to get him through the Kabrakin ultimate burst damage. He gets just around the corner, Meditation comes in, saves him, and him getting out of that fight alive, it was a huge turning point there in that match. But I, I agree, a lot of it was Ataraxia kind of ducking and weaving, but a big Aegis for him. The Meditation came in, got him just up over it, because I believe Vulcan even hit like a magma, magma bomb on him right at the end of it. He had just enough health to still keep getting out of there, so. It makes you better, you know, when someone, you know, that when he gets up there, he has that presence, he's so calm, toss it to you, it's so clear. It's easier to do your job. You can just relax and focus on what you know, so. I mean, even if I felt less comfortable with the game, Golden Boy just makes it that easy to work with him. Ataraxia has such good calls mm -hmm. that he can say, okay, I'm being collapsed on, obey, I need your help. It's like a, a bat signal up into the air. And they followed through, they had a med right after another. The Karakin could have killed him, but Maniac coming in with that second meditation was was perfect. Yeah, I mean, would you say, uh, would you say, who, who would you say is Robin in that situation? Who is Robin in that situation? Um, I would say, Emilesy would look the best in tights. Fair point. Fair. But point. I also don't want to put that onto him because I think that's a decision that he should be able to make himself. <laughs> fair point. Fair point. All right. But what happened basically? Sorry. What happened basically was Obey Alliance. They got that gold for around 15 minutes, and I believe it was that fight where Ataraxia did survive. Uh, right after that, we saw them basically get the gold fury, and when they got the gold fury at 15. Sorry to beat around the bush for your question, but yeah. I've, uh, when they got the gold fury at 15 minutes, they were able to then, they turned the gold advantage in their favor. They turned the kill advantage in their favor. A minute later, they rotated to the left lane. Uh, Pretty Prime was able to pick up three kills, and they swung the game at that 15 minute mark. That was definitely the the uh, turning point of the game, and Sir Nunos and Anorexia was able to get away and did not fall down in that fight either. They were like the San Antonio Spurs in oh, that match. Man. They took it to a half-court defense. You know, they, they ignored three kills on the Nemesis, kept farming and kept working. The biggest nerves came when he'd ask a question and I had to think, wait, wait, wait when did that happen? Uh, I think I know what happened. I'm just gonna say it and try and speak confidently. I don't know if it's accurate or not, but here we go. So I, there's a potential that I said the, some things that were just completely wrong. I feel like Team Rival felt like they had that and were feeling pretty comfortable. But the second that Ataraxia had survived, enough time for the rest of his team to just come through, they got his back and then that was a tremendous moment. We all know Ataraxi is a really strong player. Of course. He's been around the scene. He really knows what he's doing. And then Kernunos, a really strong god at the time, something that he's well rehearsed in. So that was something I think Team Rivals wasn't expecting him to survive, which completely threw him off guard a bit. Dare I say that play was a little hawk wild, huh? Badam! <laughs> <laughs> it was
was a little hog wild. Yeah, I think that's right. We might need to rein Gold Boy in on that. One. No, no, you never, you never rein me in, John. It's just it doesn't work like that. Oh, well, listen. So Obey is going to be moving on to the finals here. Uh, what do you want to see different from Obey? going into this because they don't know who their opponent is yet but I, I do want to get your thoughts on that that's a that's a, actually a really great question um, let's talk a little bit about what Obey, Obey did well in game in that last game it was that they went for the late game um, it was the doom orb that you saw on the Thoth that's why he got so far ahead in the transcendence on Kernanos so because they went that stacking route when 15 minutes came they blew up if they want to make sure they win this next one maybe take a bit more of an early game focus here in this next game let's see some items that get online a little bit earlier maybe Ick Vile um, something like that get an early aggressive comp kind of like what you know rival had just don't give that lead up in the middle game is all i'd say yeah it's hard to make changes when you're purely dominant right so they absolutely destroyed uh team they saw team rival they absolutely destroyed them we thought that these three these kills on the nemesis were going to transition to something transition into more uh team obey they need to per they need to do the same thing again what happens when you win right you want to execute more winning you want to execute the same strategies don't change it if it's not broken they're throwing a lot of unique things out there. They're honestly bringing a lot back to the meta. They brought Bologna back hard, especially with that Mystical Mail mm -hmm. and that Vanguard. But the issue there is that they have a lot of camping mentality, especially Ice Ice Baby and Deathwalker. You have that, and it's like, okay, well, I'm going to stay on your lane because you're getting so much pressure. But they don't realize that as long as the game goes on, that that pressure is not going to amount to anything in those team fights. Obey is the, t I think, top team right now. I mean, you always got to give energy their props. So taking them all the way to four games is impressive and looking good in each one. Just remember, you know, maybe to keep that focus in the game because they executed in their picks and bans. Yeah, no, I mean, uh, to be fair, you know, Rival, this is a squad that has the potential. And who knows? We may even see them go further, right, depending on how they're able to collaborate. Uh, and listen. <laughs> and listen. I had to get it back again. I had to get it back again. I'm sorry. It's just what I do. But in any case, so, John, thank you so much uh, for your time here. And I'm really looking forward to the next games coming up. Uh, do you think Obey is going to win it all? Oh, I absolutely do, right? If, unless it's energy standing in their way, then I don't see Obey slowing down. <laughs> all right. Well, <laughs> you know what? It's going to be very interesting to see how all this pans out. But for now, let's go ahead and send it to a break. When we come back, though, we will continue on with Smite Masters 2017. I think I nailed it. Golden Boy and I have great chemistry. Golden Boy saying previously that we were eventually going to work together uh, came true. It was not a spoiler of that, but it was a it was a career move. But that was a lot of fun, and that's what I've been dreaming of doing since I've been here. That analysis desk is perfect for me. Yeah, um, I feel like I performed really well. Um, the only thing might be, and they keep giving me that tip, it's to slow down. So I, I think there's some times where I tried and hopefully they saw that, but um, that's really the only thing I'd be worried about, them critiquing me on, because I think it went really, really well. John, Rabies, Gabriella, other John. This was a little bit different, not straight commentary. Was this more your element? How'd you guys feel? Felt good, okay. man, yeah. Well, sounds like the whole chorus felt pretty good. And we'll see what the judges actually thought. Golden Boy, Kelly, and Hitty Man, what are your thoughts? John, Finch, Miss the Young Link, step up, please. Absolutely. Hey, buddy, how are you feeling? <laughs> feeling good, feeling good. You know, you still have a little bit of the issue with the speed. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, and, and I was actually matching it after uh, a little while. I don't know if all you guys were aware, but there were like specific things I was doing. Um, I was making a horrible joke two times, and then I had four points I essentially wanted to hit, and you hit all of it. So, good job. Yeah, uh, John, you have great body language. Your interaction with Golden Boy is top tier. You're charming, but you just, we keep telling you every time that you gotta slow it down a little bit. Yeah. And you would match Golden Boy's speed, and then you'd start speeding up to get this point across. It's not a cast. You don't have to rush to make sure you don't miss anything. It's an analysis desk. You can slow it down a little bit. Yeah. Uh, take a step back. Okay. Uh, Gabriella, please step up. So how was it? I'm feeling more on edge than I have at any point in the show so far, and I didn't know that was possible. <laughs> I did pick up that you were a little on edge, but I will say this. We have been asking you for so many, you know, challenges now to bring out the personality. And you did it. You brought it out. You 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 were funny, you were bubbly, and and it was nice. Like it was it was a joy, it was a joy working with you here on the desk. 
Well, the personality definitely came through, as we said. It did hurt on your technical side, though, overall. I think your technical side was weaker than we've seen before from you. And I can see that some of that probably was down to the fact that you're trying to focus on your personality side. You've got to find that balance, though. That's really key to find the balance of the two, where you still get your personality out there, but at the same time, give us the information. One of the issues I had with you earlier is that you run on a little bit when you're doing your analysis, but today I saw you catch a verbal cue from Golden Boy and you immediately finished up your thought and were able to turn it off. And that's that's good. Being able to catch your host and get let him direct you is exactly what you needed. Uh, so, you know, good job overall, but you know, still you're getting there. Are you there yet? That's the question. Okay? Take a step back. Ron. Step up. <laughs> <laughs> just like messing with you. It's great. <laughs> How you feeling, man? I was waiting for this challenge the entire show, to be honest. Why is that? Because I have always wanted to do the uh, analyst desk, always, because that's my commentary, and then taking it into a conversation is is perfect. Well, I would tell you right now. Uh, I told you before that I was looking forward to working with you, and I'm glad I finally got the chance to work with you. You, uh, for one. You, you make me laugh. Uh, I laugh up to, up about a lot of things, to be fair. But there's something about you, man, that you just have like this deadpan humor that is just, like really, really funny. Um, there were two jokes, right? There was a horrible vanilla ice joke, and then there was a hog wild joke that I made, right? Some people didn't get both jokes because maybe we moved along too fast. I actually added one for you. As soon as you made the comment about the bat signal, I actually had to add to that. There was no way I could let that one slide. And that right there is actually what a good analyst desk does, because you, you gotta laugh about it, you have to have fun. And, and that was really unique from your uh, time with me on the desk. I mean, you weren't just ridiculously funny, you were also really, like you had such deep analysis. You understood the game, you were talking about the meta and you were talking about the players. The only issue that I had with you is that when you weren't speaking, you were turned off. You kind of like would slump down a little bit, fold your arms and like listen to Golden Boy, but not really be engaged. But as soon as you started talking, I could tell that you cared. I could see your personality through, but you have to have a good presence even when you're not on. Overall, the information you gave me was great. You hit all the markers that you needed to hit. Obviously, you you and John Finch both had a leg up because you'd know more about Smite. And I didn't look at that really. Like I was actually looking at how you presented the desk overall for all of you. So you did a good job. Overall, solid performance, and uh, take a step back if you don't mind. And rabies, let's go, man. Sorry to make you the last one. Sorry to it's make okay. you sweat. I, I'm used to it by now. Uh, first time you and I got to work together, Dream come true, uh, which was which was pretty dope. Yeah. Um, how do you feel? I knew coming into this, Smite was going to be my weakness. Uh, I'd never done analyst work before, so I was really new to that as well, and I just. I just wanted to play to my strengths. If I was going to survive this episode, it was going to be playing to my strengths, using my conversational pieces, trying to you know incorporate different other mainstream sports and different things like that to to carry me through it. And uh, that's what I tried to go for. Uh, I thought you actually had really good opening comments about the game. Uh, you kept talking about Nemesis's three kills, and that's what always you would come back to, no matter what question Golden Boy was asking you, because that was a bit obvious that that's what you paid attention to in the game and might have focused a little too much on, but I actually thought you brought the best level of hype and intensity than anyone else, but not too intense. It wasn't like your previous cast where we've complained about your intensity. I thought it was good. I thought it was engaging and it was different than the other uh, analysts as well. Thank you. You were really nervous today. I was nervous today, man. I could hear that. I know, I was nervous today, man. golden boy too. Like that should be, chill you out a little bit more, right? I did get much more calm when I was at the desk, even though I might've had a, um, a stutter or two, but, uh, Smite's just my uncomfort zone. And, and I get that. And like to be fair, like I said to these guys, like they had an advantage with it being Smite. I didn't look at the, the amount of knowledge you gave. Yeah. But what I did look at is how you presented the knowledge you knew, sure. right? And even if you don't know everything about the game, if you're working in the analyst desk, one of the biggest things to do is to make yourself look like you know what you're talking about. Right. Because the viewer at home won't necessarily know the blind bit of difference between you going really in depth and you being surface level. You ran on a little bit long when you, you got thrown a question. You went round the houses, and then you came in with the final point that you were trying to make. Yes, sir. If you would have took that down a little bit less, it would have hidden the nerves a little bit more and made you look even more confident in your presentation of it. Uh, I love the basketball reference, by the way. I don't even understand basketball, but I appreciate the reference to sports and tying it in together. The comfort was definitely like not there for you today. Following what we said to Ron Jabbert as well, 
Your presentation on the desk, your excitement's there, your passion's there. Could tell it down a little bit though, because it comes across very extreme to me, of like really too far forward, of like, yeah, we're gonna do this, yeah! We're on a desk, man, we're supposed to be chilling out a little bit, and like, yo, we just watched these games, they were good games, they're like, yeah, we killed it, we crushed them all, and now we're gonna do it again! You know, you get that? Um, but yeah, I, I actually enjoyed your performance on this, but it was definitely rough around the edges, a lot of rough around the edges for me. Coming out of it, it was a little intense, I'm not gonna lie. I didn't expect it. It was just like, whoa, like that was a lot of energy that was like just dispelled, right? Uh, but it wasn't awful, right? So just keep that in mind. You guys all did well, but there was one person who hit a pretty damn good home run. That person was John Finch. Congratulations. Thank you. Wow. <laughs> all right, awesome. Thank you. And that, of course, means that you are safe. Uh, you can hang back there uh, for a second, if you don't mind. <sighs> okay. We, we've said it so many times and this actually like hurts, but rabies, you're out my man. I understand. Thank Sorry, you guys buddy. for the opportunity, it's all right. No Dude, problems. Much love. You know that you have just tons of freaking talent. This isn't a setback at this point. So many people who have watched this show mm -hmm. are gonna know who the hell Paul Santoro is. And I am just so excited for your career because you're gonna be one of the best commentators. Thanks, brother. I really appreciate it. You, my friend, have the it factor. You have the it factor that comes with esports broadcasts. You really do. You draw people in and you keep their attention as well. When you have the knowledge, you're unstoppable. When you have the knowledge, you're unstoppable. You have everything you need. You just got to hone it all together. You're going to go far. I promise you, you are. Thanks, man. No, screw this. Golden boy. Ah. <laughs> Come here, man. It's been 10 years. Thank you, guys. I don't care about the cameras anymore. I dropped the ball like so hard today. I'm just feeling like uh, I just let, I feel like I let my family down in a major way. I'm so emotionally exhausted that I don't know how to feel anymore. It was a big weight lifted off my shoulders, but I had to like try and keep myself from crying once I knew I was safe. Like the judges says, when I know how, when I have the knowledge, if it's a game I play, I practice. I'm unstoppable because I I know I've done this for so long. Today I just dropped the ball. Was insanely just nervous all day long because of smite. I'm just, I'm not intuitive, it's smite. It sucks. <laughs> I got eliminated, it sucks, but what are you gonna do? It's time to move on to the next piece of my chat, the next chapter in life, and uh, it is what it is. This isn't the last time any of you have seen Paul Raby Santoro. Today we say goodbye to, well, a New Yorker. That kind of stings me personally. But we've got three left. We've seen them cast, we've seen them cast with problems, we've seen them on the desk. What else is there left? Honestly, I don't even know. We're gonna have to find out next time on The Caster. Hey, what's up folks? Tom Battinger here. On behalf of everybody that took part, thanks for watching The Caster. We really appreciate it. But if you wanna dig even deeper and find behind the scenes action, some commentary, and all the other fun stuff, check out The Caster's YouTube page, youtube.com slash The Caster Show. We definitely appreciate it, and we'll see you later.